Today it's an honour and privilege to uh, to welcome Kate. Kate has been a big advocate for uh, uh, against uh, EMF, and I'm honoured and privileged to uh, share this table with Kate to bring forth some uh, very important information. And so, Kate, uh, <coughs> what's your thoughts on uh, EMF? What what does it actually mean? Uh, EMF is an acronym for electromagnetic fields otherwise known as EMR, electromagnetic radiation. And it is the uh, source of uh, the way your phones work, smart meters, Wi-Fi. It's a form of radiation that is utilized by the telecommunications industry in order to make communication possible these days if you're not using a landline. Interesting. Yeah. And <coughs> Kate, how does it affect the body? Okay, so there has been a lot of discussion about that. There are the telecommunications industry has vested interest in people not digging too deep about the biological effects. They have a body, an international body called the International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, otherwise known as ICNERP. Many of the people who are on it are ex-industry. They all have to be invited on, they're not co-opted, and these people make the regulations for many of the countries around the world. They base their regulations on studies that have been done typically to find no harm. Um, there was a Dr. Henry Lai who did a study of the studies a while back and he found that typically 80% of studies funded by the telecommunications industry found evidence of no harm and 80% of studies done independently found harm. So it might give you an idea as to science itself has been skewed according to who's funding it. Um, what are the symptoms that uh, show in the body when you are affected by, I guess it's called electric magnetic fields? Electromagnetic radiation, it would depend on the strength. <clears throat> so, um, in New Zealand, uh, we have a so-called regulating body. Um, I spent some time researching this about 11 years ago and I have emails here from Dr. Martin Gledhill, <clears throat> excuse me, who was then advising the government on the levels of radiation strength that are acceptable to expose the public to on a continuous basis. And in New Zealand, I'm going to draw this because it's easier for people to see. In New Zealand, the unit of measurement is volts per metre. Uh, a thousandth of a volt per metre is called a millivolt per metre. So in New Zealand, we are outside limit is 28 volts per metre. So that's at zero. What we're getting at Parliament at the moment is upwards of nine and a half volts per metre, also known as 9,500 millivolts per metre. People are getting sick at 60 millivolts <coughs> per metre. So the government set this standard up here so that anything that happened under it was legal. Um, so unfortunately what's happening right now is considered completely legal according to their standard, which was recommended by ICNERP, who say they find no harm and squash any studies that do find harm. So the symptoms we're talking about here at very low levels for electrosensitive people can be anything from heart palpitations, headaches, dizziness, sleeplessness, um, all sorts of things like that, and long-term exposure has been known to cause cancer. Back in 2011, um, IARC, which is the International Agency for Research on Cancer, found telecommunications electromagnetic radiation to be a possible 2B carcinogen. On that panel were people who wanted it to be classed as a 2A probable carcinogen. There was definite um, telecommunications influence on that study. In New Zealand, we have telecommunications industry representatives on every health board in the country who monitor what truth gets filtered through to health decisions. In New Zealand, we are living with increasing radiation because we have several telecommunications industries who compete with each other and they're all allowed to put towers up where they like. <clears throat> they don't have to apply for um, permission from councils, they can just pop them up. Sometimes they get a bit of, a bit of uh, protest from the communities. It's very seldom that the communities win this one. And so every time someone signs a contract with the telecommunications industry, it gives them the added impetus to apply for another tower. <coughs> we have far more towers than we need in this country at 4G levels. So 
The long-term symptoms are cancer. So what we're seeing down at Parliament right now is people coming away from this reading here was taken from outside the British Embassy and it was taken with a direct um, uh, XYZ directional radio frequency meter. It was guaranteed to be coming from there and we know the Beehive is also sending out 4G radiation as well. So this is not 5G. I'm not dealing with 5G here. It's a different bandwidth. And I won't speak to that because I don't know enough about it. But <clears throat> what we're seeing here is potentially setting up cell division disruption and chromosome damage which may have uh, manifestations down the track in the future. It can take 20 years to show, which is part of the reason why it's been so difficult to prove its connection with carcinogenic influence, just like the tobacco industry. Mm. Yeah. So um, that might give you an idea. That's actually 28,000 millivolts. Sorry per meter. Where I live, it's 3.5. So that might give you an idea of what people are being exposed to. Although that's less than half the legal limit, it's still excessive and it's causing strife. <coughs> There's one other effect that I really want to cover. There's a fabulous film which is well worth looking up called Resonance beings of frequency and it came out in 2012 by James Russell. It's free on Vimeo on the internet. That will explain things a lot better. What happens with the pineal gland is it cannot distinguish between light and radio frequencies. So <clears throat> you should have no lights on at night because that tells your body to start manufacturing melatonin which is a hormone which prevents cancer and heals us. If you have no lights on you should be fine unless you have anything that's using Wi-Fi or a cell phone that's on, or a baby meter, monitor, or a smart meter, this will tell the pineal gland it's still daylight, and the pineal gland will not produce melatonin. So when people say they're having problems sleeping, I check under their pillows, we have excessive amounts, I think it was several years ago, there were 350,000 New Zealanders on sleeping pills, and while they were busy arguing about the long-term effects of sleeping pills, no one was looking under the children's pillows, particularly uh, children with waiting for a new text to come through or didn't want to be out of the flow of information, so they're not turning their cell phones off at night. It's very important to cut your, all your radio frequencies at night for your <coughs> pineal gland to tell your body to produce melatonin. Mm. That's one of the main effects as well. And again, over the years, it, it's accumulative. So it's another environmental toxin that we need to watch. Mm. My concern about the... Uh, um, Protest is the psychological effects and ramifications of being exposed to this technology long term is going to cause poor judgment, irritability, short temper, sleeplessness. These are all things we don't want our protesters to have. They've really got to be well slept. So what I'm suggesting is people buy the, they're called Mylar blankets. You can buy them in a hunting shop, pretty cheaply, five bucks, or get them online. Someone needs to get heaps of them. Be careful with the children, they don't smother under them, but they, they shouldn't do that. And just cover people at night inside the tents. It might help mitigate the radiation. I'm pretty certain they'll be pumping it at night time just as much as they are in day. And that's really dangerous because people are waking up without having had a good sleep. They can make clear judgments and be calm and peaceful, which is the basically the ethos of this particular protest is to maintain this superior moral status. And you do not want to be descending into the cops level simply because you didn't get enough sleep. So that's really important. I also have spoken with naturopaths and herbalists who recommend iodine. Clinicians iodine is pretty cheap. And the main clinicians iodine that you can get on the market, an adult can take between five and 10 <coughs> drops a day in water and a child, I'm not a herbalist, and I'm not a naturopath. So if you're concerned, please consult as a medical practitioner mm. on this. But this is what I've been told for healthy people. If you have any problems with the thyroid, don't do this. Please go consult a medical practitioner on this one. But it will help repair damaged DNA, along with nettle tea, fruit and vegetables, and green kiwi fruit. So those are recommendations yeah. to help mitigate the effects of this. Very scary mm. thought. Well, there goes my tin hat, Terry. <laughs> um, well, you actually answered my question, because that was one of the questions that I was going to ask you. What are the solutions to protect right. ourselves? from the radiation effect, which obviously is a, <coughs> an energy radiation mm. from the, of harmful uh, EMF. But um, hey, I really appreciate that. And we really appreciate the information you shared. We well, hope we can expand on it. 
and time to gun. Uh, this is Kate and I, I hope that you would have uh, learnt uh, something new about this. This is actually happening but uh, there are ways we can protect ourselves uh, and knowledge is power. It's really important um, for people to realise that their cell phones are actually part of the problem. So at a base level, what I was measuring with my radio frequency meter at camp could be explained by, to a degree, the amount of live videos being made yeah. and downloads happening in response to the cell phone tower above. So the, the protesters themselves are creating a lot of the radiation traffic and it's not something that's solely coming from the government. This is how your cell phone works. Everyone's been in electro smog for a long time. Um, it's the excessive amounts that are beyond that that I'm concerned about and I think others are too. Oh, by the way, also, um, Dr. Matt Shelton is recommending people get off site for an hour or so, get down to the beach, get into the ionizing you know, frequencies of the, of the sea and get some fresh air, get walking about a bit rather than staying still in the, on site for too mm. long. I think it's really important that people mm. monitor how they're feeling as well.